Hello. In a face recognition pipeline, convolutional neural networks are responsible for representing face images as vectors. We fit two face images to a CNN, then we will have two multidimensional vectors. Secondly, we will find the distance between these vectors. And finally, we will classify image pairs as same person if the distance is less than a custom threshold value. In this video, we will mention how to determine the threshold value in a modern face recognition pipeline. We will use Deep Face Framework for Python in this lecture. It's fully open source and its source code can be found in its GitHub repository. It's also available on PyPy as well. If you are going to use Deep Face Framework first time, you need to call this command pip install deep face. The dataset we are going to use can be found under the tests folder and dataset folder in face repository. There are 25 images in this folder and also a master CSV file exists here. Master CSV stores image pairs in file X and file Y columns and also information about these pairs. They are same person or not in the decision column. Let's read master CSV first. To read it, I'm going to import pandas library and the data frame is going to be pandas.readcsv and it's going to be master.csv as seen image pairs belong to same person appear in the early rows of the data frame whereas image pairs belong to different person appear in the final rows of the data frame let's see the size of our data frame it consists of 300 instances also, let's see the distribution of decision column. Data frame dot decision dot value counts. There are 38 positive and 262 negative instances in the data frame. Now we will fit these pairs to the deep face framework. Let's import deep face framework first from deep face import deep face. We will call deepface.verify function and pass image pairs as input. Let's create input instances here. Data frames, file X and file Y columns. Let's see instances first. Uh, this is a type of data frame. We can convert this to numpy array by calling values function but we actually need input instances in python list format that's why i'm going to call to list function let's see the type of instances here let's list now and let's see the content it's just a python list we will pass instances to the verify function as input also we can pass model name and distance metric values optionally the default values are vgg face for model name and cosine similarity for distance metric and finally we will store the response of verify function in the response object variable verify function lasts 10 minutes for 300 instances Let's see the content of the response object. As seen, pair one exists in the first item, but the second item is pair ten. This means that the order of input instances and response object is different. That's why we should access the distance values based on the pair index. Let's build a for loop for i in range from zero to length of instances now we will access the response object pair dash and here we will pass i plus one because uh, as you remember the index value starts with one in the response object and here i need the distance value of this object let's store this in the 
distance variable and print it. We can access the distance values for each pair. Let's run it. Take the four digits after the point and store these distances in a Python list. Instead of printing, I will append the distance value in the distances list. Now I have the distances list and I will store this distances list in the data frames distance column. Let's see the data frame content. Now I have the distance values for each pair and it's labeled as yes or no. Let's visualize the distance distribution graphics for both yes and no classes in my data frame. Data frame and in the parentheses data frame dot decision equal to yes. Get its distance values dot plot dot kda. Similarly, I'm going to plot the distribution graphic for no classes. Blue line states the distance distribution of yes classes and orange line states the distance distribution of no classes. These are two discrete sets. I mean that if the distance value is almost 0 0.2 then it's going to be same person. Otherwise if the distance value is about 0 0.6 or 0 0.7 then it's going to be different person. But there's a shared area close to 0.4 as seen here. Now let's find the best split point for yes and no classes. I'm going to import from chef boost import chef boost as chef define a configuration string the algorithm will be C4.5 Let's see the data frame here again. We just need the distance and decision columns. That's why I'm going to create a temp data frame and it expects the distance value as first argument and the decision as second argument. Let's see temp data frame. We will paste this data frame to chef boost framework. We are going to call chef boost.fit and pass the data frame as first argument and configuration file as second argument. And we will store this in the model variable. That's finished and the accuracy as seen 98%. Let's see the build decision tree. An outputs folder is created in the same directory and under the rules folder rules.py exists and it contains the build decision tree it says that if the distance value is less than this then it's going to be same person in other words this is going to be the threshold value the threshold value will be 0.31 c4.5 algorithm splits the data set based on the best split point Let's evaluate the data set and set prediction column as no as initial value. Find the instances in the data frame having a distance value less than the threshold value data frame and in the parentheses data frame dot distance less than or equal to the threshold value. Let's add them. And I need the index values of this and let's store the IDX variable. We will update the prediction column for those indexes as yes data frame dot log and pass IDX as first argument and we are going to update the prediction column as yes. Now let's see the data frame. Let's see the confusion metrics. I need to import the scikit-learns confusion metrics module first and call confusion metrics function and pass data frame dot 
decision dot values and data frame dot prediction dot values let's see the confusion metrics first let's see the documentation of confusion metrics if we call revel function confusion metrics dot revel we will need these values respectively true negative false positive false negative and true positive let's see them recall is going to be true positive over true positive plus false negative and precision is going to be true positive divided by true positive plus false positive and accuracy is going to be true once true positive plus true negative over all of them let's see all of those metrics the accuracy calculation is wrong because i said true once but i put here false negative this should be true negative the accuracy is 98 percent precision is 100 percent and recall is 89 percent we can multiply them with 100 so in this lecture we have mentioned to determine the best value for the threshold value in a phase recognition pipeline we firstly find the distance values for both positive and negative samples and use a decision tree algorithm to find the best split point in this way we can fine tune the threshold value in a modern phase recognition pipeline thank you all for watching and thank you for your attention and see you next time